home is not just a money and you buy something uh, home is where lives are transformed and i have seen it in my own life and you know when you have a couple or a family buy their first home and move in it's it's a feeling that you can't describe you create wealth for what to give your family and yourself a good life and good mm-hmm. life starts with a very good home we we are present across all the segments so 50 to 60 lakhs all the way up to 30 crore look at look at all billionaires mm-hmm. the famous billionaires mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, they probably build uh, a home of 1000 crore 2000 crore 5000 crore you can't buy a car of 5000 crore go back 40 50 years uh, the preferred homes were which were near railway stations in mumbai yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, but basically, in advertisement, it's two minutes walking from railway station. Right. Right. Right now, if you say two minutes from <laughs> railway station, people will not even visit. Real estate is actually a very uh, idiot-proof investment. <laughs> Welcome back listeners to another episode of Economically Yours. I'm your host Charmi Shah and today I have with me Mr. Parag Saraya who's the CEO, project CEO at Rustamji, uh, one of the biggest builders at Mumbai if I have to you know say so and uh, he has had a wide range of experience when it comes to being in the real estate. He's worked with Kalpatro, he's worked with Suntech Realty and so on. Uh, but before, you know, I speak more about you, Parag, uh, welcome on board. Welcome to Economically Yours. I am delighted to host you today. Uh, can we begin with your journey and your experience so far? Uh, sure. So uh, thank you, Charmi, for inviting and 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 uh, having me on your uh, podcast. Uh, so I am I'm a Mumbai boy, if I can say so, born and brought up here, especially first 20 years. And after that, I've been to places, did my engineering from Pune, worked in Chennai for three, four years, came back to Bombay, went to US, then to London, back to Bombay. I did spend about five to six years in a, a you know tier two, three town called Belgaum, which is on the northern part of Karnataka. That's where I, I, I learned a lot of real estate. Uh, came back to Mumbai about, uh, I would say, 2017. So it's been seven years. And uh, I, I think real estate is something which I really love. Uh, you know, and I can see myself doing something in real estate uh, uh, till the day I die. Okay, <laughs> great, great. But why real estate? Like you mentioned that you were in a tier two, three city, right? And that's where you uh, started your journey into the real estate. What was that one click that made you think that, you know, this is the industry I want to be in? So, uh, I'll tell you, uh, I, I've done my studies in 90s, uh, you know, and engineering and then MBA. So, typical path, at least at that point of time is engineering. I was very good at, I'm actually a computer engineer, not a civil engineer. <laughs> so, uh, and then mm. uh, I was doing uh, business development, sales account management in IT services. So I was with uh, HCL Technologies and then with Tech Mahindra in UK. And what I found out, you're doing good work, uh, but I said, you know, it's B2B. Mm. Uh, the work that we are doing, I don't see a smile on my customer. I don't even know who my customer is. Mm. So it is we providing certain services, certain work. Yes, there is an end user somewhere who's using their internet or a phone. And so that was one aspect. And second was I really wanted to come back to India. And uh, I I was very attracted. I still think India is a very, very good growth story Uh, in in, uh, developed parts, Europe. At, at, at least at that point of time in US, if you could do a GDP of 2%, 3%, you know, they would be excited. Mm-hmm. And we take 6 7% as a granted. Mm-hmm. So uh, when I saw things in, in Western world, there's a lot of replacement demand, whether it's housing or, or TV or refrigerator or cars, uh, people were replacing what they had. In India, people did not have it. So yeah. if, if you are a person who likes to create and I, it, real estate was not something which I had selected, I want to do, it just happened. So I, yeah. I said, let me go back to India and do something either in retail or in food or in real estate, but it has to be a consumer facing uh, industry. So that was the thought process. And I met some people, they wanted to have somebody who's Indian and wanted to 
relocate and 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 it, it's a long story but so real estate happened to me and and once it happened i i realized uh, real estate is a lot of common sense uh, really i mean there is no in 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 some sense there is no rocket science yes there is a lot of technology and civil engineering and design and structural but when you design a home you are also you are also a home buyer and a home user so if if you understand uh, what are the things that you want in your home what kind of home you want to buy and live in uh, that's a starting point so as long as you keep that thought process first and keep the money second uh it, it it's a very intuitive industry it's an industry where you get to meet people every day it's an industry where uh, you get to help and improve lives of so many thousands of people because home is not just a money and you buy something uh, home is where lives are transformed and i have seen it in my own life and you know when you have a couple or a family buy their first home and move in it's it's a feeling that you can't describe and and after that with that social fabric and and all the facilities so that's how it happened and i i i just i can speak about real estate for many hours many days but that's how it happened <laughs> just glad yeah. to be in india uh, in a city like mumbai uh, at this junction and i think next 20 25 years are probably the most exciting in the history of india including real estate right so uh, uh, we i work in the wealth management industry right so we've been seeing an increase exponential increase with respect to nri is looking to invest in india and this itself shows that a lot of people have started believing in the india growth story as you mentioned today and that is not possible uh, without india growing on all aspects including the real industry real estate industry as well but you mentioned right that uh, you looked at uh, talking with customers you know seeing a smile on their face with respect to families buying a house or something like that so could you you know dive deep with respect to your current role at Rustam ji so uh, my designation says i am a project ceo uh, which 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 means a uh, lot of things so essentially uh, the structure at at Rustam ji is that really to get the project executed uh, implemented end to end so it starts with the brief when we uh, get a project from a business development point of view get it design uh, you know in terms of with the architects uh, with our sales team get that feedback because every every market is different and from then on to launch execute tie up the funding uh, make sure that uh, the execution as in actual construction happens on time and uh, as a promised delivery uh, so really we have uh, seven eight different teams and and uh, we are responsible for profit and loss and also to make sure that there is there is that common theme across the teams because all the projects are not same uh, so i am handling a project where uh, there is a you know a flat selling at 2 and 1/2 crores i am mm-hmm. also handling a project where a flat is selling at 25 crores yeah right so to to the theme and the language of the project uh, and really if, if there are issues if if there is any crisis if ever uh, if there are decisions to be made so that's so i am a common thread a lot of people most of the times know what to do when when they uh, come across uh, you know a particular uh, issue or or a decision which they've ne- never really you know had dealt with before that's when i step in and and overall if if there is a process said the job is easy you know you know the data yeah, points yeah. you know what's uh, falling behind what's not falling behind and and so and so forth and i can tell you the real estate especially in last 6 to 8 years have changed every year all right so it it, it was uh, 2016 was demonetization 17 was gst and rera 2018 mm. was uh, i think nbfc crisis mm. 19 was uh, probably a quiet year 2020 everybody knows so the whole world yeah. was shaking yeah and a uh, lot of people thought the industry which will be the most affected real estate bounced back uh, very yeah. well uh, because of few things uh, a lot of governments especially government of maharashtra and and at the center uh, they took steps to revive it and most importantly i can tell you a lot of consumer understood importance of home hmm yeah after, yeah. after uh, being caged Mm-hmm. uh in a, in a home for months and probably for years with work from home 
so most part of 2020 and 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 large part of 2021 people were home and then that is where you know they started saying i you know i want a better home i want a bigger home i want a home with amenities i actually mm-hmm. i don't want just a home i want a community yeah so that that resurgence in in the whole uh, real estate demand and actually more than demand the right kind of demand i i had heard a lot of people saying i'll i'll stay on rent forever why do i do this do i that i can make money on this and that and i think that's that's a good calculation uh, as a finance guy but uh, when yeah. it's home uh, you know there is an emotional connect and and finally you create wealth for what to give your family and yourself a good life and good mm-hmm. life starts with a very good home yeah so so uh, that's been that uh, turning around and and as i said uh, we all have to uh, be always learning uh, nobody in real estate can say i know everything and i've learned everything so every year there's a newer challenges uh, in terms of either technology or customer preferences sometimes it's a change in regulation so we just have to keep looking at it look at the dashboard radar and see what's right what's wrong so that's really my role a little fuzzy but uh, uh, most of the time i say i do very little and i let people do most of the things <laughs> oh okay okay i mean being one of those finance guys right i am a part of a lot of conversations where we have this excel sheet in front of us and we always argue whether renting is uh, you know all right or buying houses all right and i think what those excel sheets cannot calculate is the value of emotions attached to buying a house and the need of you know feeling safe so uh, aptly put on that particular area uh, you also mentioned about a series of events that have happened in our country like with respect to rera and demon and the things like that uh, across which affects the real estate industry so what do you think where is the industry today in india how is it spaced so uh, if if i look at last 3 to 4 years uh, what has happened was real estate fortunately or unfortunately uh, it's very easy or it was very easy to start a project just two three people get together and and start and and pre rera uh, probably things were not uh, the best for consumer rera has brought in a lot of discipline so what it has done is it has uh, made sure that serious i'm i'm not talking about large or small but serious and professional players you could be a developer who is doing one project at a time you could be a developer who is doing 13 projects 20 projects you could be a 5000 crore 2000 crore or a 20 crore developer but it it basically is saying Uh, be careful on what you're promising and what you promise you deliver right so that's so what has happened is share of organized players has increased you would probably read in a lot of reports and it, it it's bound to increase so that's mm-hmm. uh, i would say that's one part of what has uh, happened very good second whether we like it or not uh, there is a lot of migration to the top 5 6 10 cities because that's where the job creation is and and again if you read a lot of report of mckinsey and other uh, you know next 20 years uh, the larger cities will grow larger we obviously have to develop tier 2 and 3 cities but this larger cities are growing and what's very good thing i can tell you charmi is that the metro connectivity yeah uh, i mean i i can tell you the kind of infra development which is happening in in at least those large cities uh, that i am aware of and i can speak about mumbai that's where i live and i i work is uh, mumbai is having not just metro it is metro coastal road uh, trans harbor uh, line and then just just the amount of connectivity which is happening in the city is mind boggling so what it does is is basically giving people a lot of options on where to stay and they don't have to be tied to okay i need to be near to workplace because my commute takes one and a half yeah so uh, i i would say real estate itself is changing we are doing a uh, uh, lo- lot of developers are doing uh, using technology uh, using you know a lot of tools uh, to try to make sure that uh, projects are done faster yeah. connectivity is helping consumers because they have a wider choice uh, so coming coming to that so what what used to happen in probably about early 2002 to 2008 the buildings were about 20 stories let's say talk in bombay and now mm. it's 60 70 80 100 mm-hmm. how do you complete a 60 story building in a reasonable time mm-hmm. 
So people have to change. So that's, I'm talking about internal changes. And, and that's where a lot of wisdom of the teams and the consultants, the architects, so and so forth come in. So this, this industry has grown from doing few projects to doing multiple projects of 60, 70 story. And that's a good thing for consumer. Uh, if you have a wider supply, they have a good choice. Uh, they are able to now do more things uh, at home rather than trying to spend two hours, three hours every day. Uh, you know, I, I think Bangalore has similar stories. I hear uh, the famous, I think, Silk Boat Junction you have. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we, we also have few spots like that, but things are improving. Uh, and, and those are the things where I see, uh, you know, uh, real estate going in that. And uh, if you allow me to say, India has three real estate consumers. Okay. One is ultra rich. Mm -hmm. uh, they really don't need to take a loan or home loan. They have a reasonably good home, but they, they want the best. Mm -hmm. so there is that segment. Then there is this upper middle class, middle class. They have a smaller home, probably mm -hmm. in a standalone building. They mm -hmm. want a larger home. So from one bedroom to two bedroom, two bedroom to three bedroom with, with amenities. So whether it is swimming pool or it is gymnasium or, or as simple as a yoga deck on the rooftop. <laughs> uh, with a little uh, better security, good elevators and so on and so forth. So that is that migration is also happening. Mm. And there is this third India, which is the largest in numbers. They are buying their first home. Mm. And all three will continue to happen for next 20, 25 years. So mm. you have to decide where you want to focus and how much you want to focus. So most of the developers, the top 10, 20, uh, for example, Rustamji, we, we are present across all the segments, so 50 to 60 lakhs, all the way up to 30 crore. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, once uh, you have, uh, you know, kind of delivered good projects, you have a good track record, uh, you know how to handle customers, they know that, you know, certain developers are trustworthy, then I think that gamut of choices are, are wide open. Um, so uh, that's where we are. A lot of choices for consumers and a lot of choices for developers. So I think it's a it's a good uh, time to be in. Mm -hmm. So I I remember three years ago I was in Bombay for my masters and the two years that I stayed I stayed at a standalone building in Cardiff. It was a rented apartment and four friends of us were staying. And uh, the window that that was placed at my room that you know directly overlooked the Imperial Towers. So every day we used to wake up and we used to look at the Imperial Towers, the penthouse on the top and we used to wish like, boss, ek din ab pe ghar So that, that, you know, that feeling of that buying that first house is, is going to stay with us Indians. And I think you clearly very beautifully put that about uh, the projects at Rustamji, right? Uh, they, they have a wide range starting at 50, 60 and going all the way up. But I also want to dissect the real estate industry into two halves, uh, which is the commercial and the residential. So uh, mm -hmm. having, uh, you you also mentioned about the fact that, you know, work from home and a lot of companies have shifted to this culture. Uh, having said that, do you think there's a shift with respect to the number of projects that are coming up? Do you think that there's a shrinkage with respect to the commercial real estate industry vis-a-vis uh, -vis the residential one or, or uh, you know, it's at par? It's not something that's going to go down soon. So uh, I, I can tell you there are cycles. Mm -hmm. um, so in, I think, year 2013 to year 2018 is where uh, there was a lot of development in terms of the office projects, commercial. Mm -hmm. and, and residential was, uh, I, I wouldn't say lull, but uh, slightly slower than what it was. Uh, then I think in the year 2000, just, just from COVID uh, till today, uh, because of various factors, because of partial work from home and so on and so forth, uh, uh, probably you have a little more supply of commercial real estate. Uh, and the desire to own a home is so great that uh, there is very little ready supply in residential. Uh, if you look at uh, where India is and how India is and how the top four uh, cities are, more and more global companies are coming to India. Companies are expanding in, in India, even if uh, so we have a few layoffs here and there, but over over long term, and, and Charmi, this is what real estate is so a beautiful industry. What happens in in year twenty twenty three or twenty four may not happen in twenty five, and and you look at 
so as as people say you know when you invest in equities look at long term because over long term yeah. it gives you compounded return mm-hmm. same way if india is growing so will the jobs uh, will and so will uh, grade a offices mm-hmm. and if if there are more grade a offices there's more job creation more people will come into city and more people will want to buy home so i wouldn't read too much into it maybe there is a little uh, supply of certain offices but as you see probably in us and also in india uh, due to covid uh, people have realized i want a superior grade a office building mm. so uh, if you try to look at it uh, wherever either in pune or bangalore or mumbai it it's not like we have tons of supply we may have some supply here and there Mm. but you will probably see a stark difference between customers now demanding i want to be in a superior building i want my employees or our team members to be having certain facilities air quality has to be good this has to be there that has to be there so maybe the office buildings which do not meet this criteria are not doing so well mm. so that's how i would put it and uh, if jobs are growing uh, you will need people uh to be in office so there are more people in office in 2021 compared to 20 in 22 even more and in 23 even more because finally when you are building a nation you need to people you need people in a room yeah right. so yes we, we can we can do a lot of uh, zoom calls like we are doing and and so and so forth but uh you know if you are visiting mumbai you would say okay parag let's meet up in a cafe and do this so yeah right so right. that's that's how it is so uh, as i said in uh, grade a supply uh, in fact due to all the connectivity getting better uh, you probably will have multiple uh, uh, cbds or or secondary business district in in multiple cities so in mm. bangalore there are few pockets in pune there are three four pockets and and so on mm. and so forth so, uh, mm. i i see commercial also growing over long term mm. residential obviously will grow i mean look at look at all billionaires the mm-hmm. famous billionaires mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, they probably build uh, a home of 1000 crore 2000 crore 5000 crore you can't buy a car of 5000 crore mm. so home buying will continue uh, office building will continue uh, that's not something it's just that you have to be careful what kind what quality of project are you building right that's important yeah. so okay we discussed we're discussing a lot about metro cities right so i i stayed in bangalore as well for about half a year and uh, you mentioned that you know in what time can a re- decent house be built a, a project can be successful i think the real question right now for people like us is in, in how much time can a decent commute uh, uh, be built like with respect to bangalore people are frustrated with respect to the uh, metro construction that's been going on i mean bombay also it's now you know started uh, in phases i am aware of that but with respect to bangalore that's one big headache that people are having so uh, extrapolating that to your uh, uh, concern on how uh, quickly a decent uh, house or a ha- project can be built what is the duration that builders are taking today so uh, it all depends uh, uh, if you have a larger township then there'll be phases uh, obviously uh, but if you talk about uh, a decent gated estate which has uh, probably a few wings two wings or three wings and and so and so forth so just to give you an example uh, we just finished we received occupancy certificate of uh, a project called rustam ji seasons d wing and uh, i can tell you with a lot of pride uh, though i was not directly involved in that project uh, the whole team did a fantastic work and i think it was uh, shade less than 2 years that uh, they did about 20 24 story building which started in the covid time okay so uh, it all depends uh, mm-hmm. you you need to have your design sorted detailed design sorted you need to have your funding sorted and you need to have your uh, project management uh, technique and the whole process sorted once you have that it's easy to replicate across projects so i i i would say a good uh, you know 22 story building i don't see a reason why it cannot be done in in a, just about 2 years right sometimes okay. it takes more when you have a larger you you have a 10 acre or or 50 acre plot then there's a lot of mm-hmm. infrastructure development that you need to do so first set of buildings may uh, take longer uh, but 
then this is what it is and then larger buildings obviously taller buildings uh, will have a slightly larger time frame probably three three and a half years but also what happens is with the advanced technologies like my uh, and and you know skip form works uh, you are able to probably achieve somewhere between seven to ten days a slab so you could actually finish uh, creating one slab in about eight days okay Okay. You mentioned about some technology. Could you uh, dive deeper into that, please? Sure. So, uh, Myvan is 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 a popular uh, technology. So, what used to happen earlier was uh, people used to have this, uh, you know, wooden formwork. You basically put the plates, wooden uh, uh, wooden sheets, ply ply sheets. You know, you kind of join them and then put the concrete and so on and so forth. Okay. What we are doing for last so many years and so many developers have been doing, you have an aluminium form works. So it's just like a aluminium uh, sheets. It's like they fix with each other like a Lego block. So you okay. create a box and you pour the concrete. And, and after some time, you can just, you know, release the uh, nuts and, and that whole form work, those plates come off. You go to the next floor and you again join it. So it, it, it's basically very fast rather than doing it manually. Uh, mm. You don't require a very highly skilled labor. Semi-skilled labors are fine. And and once you have one or two slabs done, the laborers know exactly what to do. And if your design is same across the floors, you are, that's how you are able to pour the whole concrete and get one slab done in about eight to 10 days. So it, it, it's okay. the modular formwork which allows you uh, to have a good accuracy. And, and the beautiful thing about this, most of the walls are also concrete. So there mm. is very little leakage or or those kind of issues. Uh, and earlier it used to happen, you have certain walls which are concrete, certain are brick walls and so on and so forth. So now most of the buildings use this technology and hence they are able to get a good speed with, with reasonably semi-skilled people. Because labor yeah. is another issue that uh, all uh, all the industries are facing and, and most uh, real estate, of course, because labor cost keeps going up in India, as okay. you know. Uh, and uh, as we build more projects, we need more uh, people. Mm. So we, all, all of us, including all the industry and especially real estate, we, we are trying to see how can we make a building? How can you build a building with less number of people mm. on site? Right. So that's where, that's where the industry is, is, is uh, kind of growing. And India has a long way to go, uh, right. but it's on the right path. Right. So technology is everywhere. It's become an entire industry in itself now. And uh, with the onset of prop tech also, I've done a few projects on prop tech in my, during my master's. And uh, uh, at that point of time, it was uh, baffling to know that not one uh, project came under India. So all the prop tech projects that I studied at that point of time came from abroad. So uh, uh, can you like walk us through the technological evolution that you witnessed that's happened in India in the real industry, uh, in the real estate industry? Sure. So if you go back about 25, 30 years, uh, there would be a team uh, of people on site, site as in the plot where the building is, uh, you know, getting constructed. The design, the purchase, the sales, the uh, collection of money, the accounting, everything would be done by a set of four or five people. Mm. right and people across the street or in in that location would end up buying they would buy because they know some xyz in that company or they know the mm. owner of the company. so from that it has evolved and it was very easy or rather or not much of a technology was required you know even mm. the concrete mixing was happening on site mm. but these are probably uh, ground plus seven story ten story buildings as in when, uh, you know, a lot of development happened, uh, the more FSI as in more buildable a space was allowed on a particular plot, uh, it became ground plus 20. Customer mm -hmm. started demanding better quality. Customer started paying for better quality. Mm -hmm. uh, rules change. So you have uh, uh, above certain height, you need to get uh, fire, uh, you know, NOC or fire department and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. They have certain... Uh, you know, regulation, you you have multiple elevators in the building. So from, from basically building a small building of ground plus four or seven or 10, it became a project with multiple functions. So you have architects, you have, uh, you know, MEP, uh, mechanical, electrical, 
uh, plumbing and and you have specialized people so you had somebody who's doing only firefighting equipment so yeah. from uh, few people doing everything you have now fewer people doing one thing and they do that one thing so well then everybody goes to them how is this done right mm -hmm. so that's how the evolution happened and then we had a lot of earlier probably many many years back probably blueprints were drawn by hand mm. then came computers from yeah. computers the autocad and now we uh, you know a lot of developers do a uh, bim uh, model basically it's a 3d visualization yeah. tool where a uh, lot of errors so whatever planning is done is is done in 2d mm. but you have a lot of uh, elements columns beams lab plumbing uh, so and so forth so when you actually start building you realize that in 2d it looked okay but in 3d a pipe is suddenly going through one of the columns or one of the beams <laughs> so uh, the 3d tools help us visualize and correct those errors early on so those are mm -hmm. some of those things uh, some of the other tools uh, you know uh, we and a lot of developers use is trying to predict the cost Mm. once you do a lot of projects you understand what is it 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 gives you because if if you know your cost you know what money do you need mm. right and helps you tie up your funding either through sales or through through bank banks and uh, financial institutes so it's more and more predictability because when when there is a developer who is doing 17 18 19 20 projects mm. uh, it, there is no way you can actually do all this in an excel sheet or just mm. go to somebody's desk and see what are you doing yeah right? so that's why you have dashboards you have checkpoints you have cost you have you know uh, so we today would know how much money would we require in next three months for the project per department mm. okay. right so it's all broken down into small pieces mm. Like a granular then, dissection, you know. Correct, you know. correct, correct. And and then you have a process and a checklist which makes sure that if 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 certain purchase uh, tender has to be issued, it it has to be issued on twenty first of April. Tick. Uh, tenders uh, received, the response is received, and then you get another ten days. And tender, as in the purchase order, has to be issued by fifteenth of May. Hmm. So if if you set that uh, process, if you set the plan and you track it, at least your chances of error or slippage are a very very minimal. So uh, it is basically from starting at the drawing board to scheduling, cost control, and then finally quality control. So those are the things which now you are able to. Without these tools, it's not possible to do multiple projects. Yeah. So companies yeah. who are doing multiple projects, they are investing in in so much of tools, training of people. even our uh, stakeholders like architects or consultants they use the same tools so it, it's uh, basically rather than all coming in one room you are able to do now due to covid i can say that everybody is so comfortable now with zoom and you know uh, google meet and all so a lot of work gets done without spending a lot of time in traffic of uh, this metro cities hmm. about the costing part right so i want to understand this from a developer point of view that what is it that when you all are uh, kind of deciding upon you know where to set up the projects i am seeing a transition today with respect to people i'll just take the example of bombay right people wanting to stay in say bandra or juhu to people now wanting to stay in say kaf parade or borivali where you know if i wake up in borivali but my house overlooks a forest and hills and stuff like that so it's not within the city that i'm staying at so is there a, a shift in demand with respect to consumers or is it that the developers are you know marketing these locations in such a manner that consumers are you know bound to kind of desire for such locations so it is bit of everything uh, so what happens is for example if we at rustam ji so we we have there is a, a blue and a green theme okay. so most of our projects are either uh, you know there's a blue which is a sea view hmm. and green which is a, a a a large garden or a forest or a hmm. national park view Yeah. Right? Yeah. So again, what happens is it's basically what kind of see there are customers across the segment. Yeah. There are customers who will buy a home next to a railway station if there is a noise. But it it you as a developer you want to define which segment I want to be present in, yeah. and in which segment I can actually create the best value. 
so if i think uh, i i can create a lot of value for buyers and the buyers with a good taste and who who would want to stay in a good home and then it becomes rewarding for us to go and execute that project to back that project right which may come at, at a certain price but uh, that's how it is so and 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 slowly people have uh, again go back 40 50 years uh, the preferred homes were which were near railway stations in mumbai yeah 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 right so but basically in advertisement it's 2 minutes walking from railway station right right so right now if you say 2 minutes from <laughs> railway station people will not even visit correct so, uh, what has happened is due to uh, the change in the ownership or transport a lot of people probably trying to or or now have cars they don't have to go to a uh, uh, railway station especially with metros now they really don't have to and mm-hmm. they realize after a long hard day of work i want to actually come home uh, which is in a peaceful location and not have a, a lot of traffic and and chaos near my home so they are preferring that and hence developer are also going and and offering those homes so it 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 becomes uh, for us a better strategy we are able to uh, attract better people and we are one of the few ones who have that uh, projects in our pipeline and where where if others don't have it uh, as i said in mumbai there is a spectrum of buyers and uh, mm. the buyers with good taste and with good budget would want to buy in such places Mm, right so having discussed about the cost side from the developers point of view i want to come to the customers point of view and i know there's a set of segment that you know will go and look uh, to buy the houses but for people like me who are in their mid 20s and you know not uh, have not earned enough to buy our first house yet but want to say capture on the real estate industry we have to raise reits uh, listed in india even rustam ji is listed in india uh, what is your take on uh, you know investing into those kind of products just to uh, you know have a uh, what do i say allocation towards real estate sure so uh, as you say most people when they say real estate is an investment it's a very broad subject yeah uh, real estate has lot of classes of uh, you know segments so one is residential uh, other is office uh, for which there are a couple of reits now uh, the third segment is warehousing okay hmm. there is there is also data centers uh, there is also a second home a home in goa which every indian wants to buy Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, right so and so for then and somebody will say i'll 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 buy a home in nenital or or whatever mm-hmm. so i'll i'll classify into two parts uh, first you said uh, the younger uh, you know uh, people who would want to buy home uh, at some point of time uh, and and they would want to buy it now but they probably need to uh, collect enough capital uh, yeah, right capital. so i it it it's uh, it's not an advice i i can just say that's a time frame for yourself so you know that if you uh, want to buy a home let's let let's take a theoretical number let's say 1 crore hmm you know that you will probably want to put down 20 25% the rest you can uh, if if yeah. you want you can yeah hmm right so so 25 lakhs is your target hmm work backwards say in 3 years i want to collect 25 lakhs hmm right so start saving towards that uh, and i'm not saying don't enjoy other part but rather than taking let's say a tour of europe which will cost you 5 lakh rupees <laughs> that 5 mm-hmm. lakh rupees goes in your uh, home uh, initial investment kind of a fund or a bucket correct mm-hmm. or that if you need to probably invest equity is also a good option over 3 years Hmm. right and, and there are a lot of other options so that is something which people need to consciously if you don't work on it consciously hmm. you will have hazar things in life that you can <laughs> buy with that 5 lakh rupees hmm. so i i would i i would see it is because the amount of wealth creation also happens through home ownership is very good because india is one of the few countries which has very good tax benefits on home buying yeah uh, right so uh, a you are creating a wealth home prices are increasing uh, and then second you're getting tax benefits so it it's it's obviously a good thing uh, there is a lot of this argument i may not stay at 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 a city i want to ship the home and 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 so on and so forth but it's well uh, if you really with all the connectivity where you stay probably may not be that uh, important uh, mm. i i would say because now you are able to criss cross in a city very easily 
Mm-hmm. And even if you were to let's say go to a different city, you rent your home and you actually take uh, a home in a different city on rent. At least that mm. financial offset yeah. will happen. Mm. Now coming to the investment part, somebody who has investable corpus, and how you want to uh, you know really want to uh, invest. Uh, real estate also takes a lot of capital to buy, especially uh, homes. And that's why, as you say, I mean, you are a better uh, person to explain the REITs are, but REITs are basically like mutual funds. Uh, mm-hmm. So you you have a large mall or office complex and uh, probably that's worth 2,000 crore. You don't have 2,000 crore. So 2,000 crores worth of asset is, is cut into small pieces where somebody with a 2 lakh or a 5 lakh rupees could go and buy. Uh, mm-hmm. So that is something, uh, but by by nature, also office assets uh, have a higher rental income, but maybe uh, uh, a lesser wealth creation. So it's, it's a slightly better than FD. Maybe it gives about 7%, 8%, 9%. So that is also uh, a good option. I would just suggest not, not because I am from real estate industry. I must say that everybody should buy only real estate as an investment. <laughs> but have a good diversified portfolio. Yeah. Hmm. And if, if you if you are buying a home, uh, buy home uh, either as an investment, whatever, in, in a place where it is easy for you to manage. Sitting hmm. in Bangalore, you buy an apartment in Jaipur, how easily can you really manage? Hmm. Right? So uh, this is something which you can see and feel or you have friends or a relative. So buy in, in a location of your comfort. Like, location very well. You mm. understand the triggers, why something will uh, appreciate in certain pockets of a city versus other pockets. So everybody in their city, you you obviously know, ki se, you know this is where it's going to come. This bridge will uh, be coming here. And it's a nice seafront and this will appreciate in about four or five years. Mm. So those are the thought process uh, people should. Uh, and another thing I'll tell you why to invest in real estate. Real estate is actually a very uh, idiot-proof investment. <laughs> Can you go uh, deep? Why, why I'm saying this is, uh, so for example, in during COVID, when it just started uh, in the month of March and April, mm-hmm. when the shares went down, a lot of people probably just sold their equities, right? Mm-hmm. And there are people who probably sold it even they uh, did not need so much money, but it's very mm-hmm. easy to sell equity. Right? Yeah. Two buttons on your mobile and it's done, sold. <laughs> Real estate is not that easy. And hence, most people waited. And once uh, we came out of COVID, there was no need to sell because, you know, prices again yeah. went up. Yeah. So I'm saying it is, you you can't sell a home in, in, in an anger. Okay, let me go and sell in next 30 minutes. Mm. So whatever are your emotions, it will get settled down. And mm. then uh, you will say, oh, good, I did not sell it or I could not mm. sell it uh, online. So, mm. uh, and what happens is when you want to pass uh, wealth through generations, real estate as a, as a part of the estate planning, which is, is your subject, uh, is, is a very yeah. good tool for you to pass on the wealth. And that's what people, a uh, lot of rich people, a lot of you know, middle class people do all over the world, not just in mm. India. Yeah. So that way I would, I would say uh, that's a good tool you know, uh, when your kids, your grandkids, if they have a place to stay, then rest can be figured out. So that is something which uh, is, is a good, I, I would say, is, is, you know, idiot proof uh, investment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which, which is, uh, if you are going to do that and arrange as your estate planning or, or your, you know, uh, uh, generational wealth transfer. Got it. I mean, very well put. I, 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 this is going to be my takeaway from the session that real estate is an idiot-proof investment. So, uh, great. I would just like to end this conversation with one question that you know you you talked about the location, the desirable location, and stuff like that. So, uh, what is the stance on real estate industry today? Is this the time to you know invest right now with respect to uh, uh, you know putting my corpus aside? Or uh, do you think that, you know, the industry is at its peak with respect to investment prices? So uh, there's something called affordability index, Mm -hmm. right? Which is, uh, uh, so if you go to HDFC's website, they've been Mm -hmm. publishing it uh, for last about 20, 25 years. 
and that mm-hmm. will tell you the affordability is probably at the best uh, or probably about 6 months back it was at the best the interest rates have moved up a little bit right uh, right now. uh there is never a bad time or a good time to buy home mm-hmm. uh, it depends on only two or three things uh, mm-hmm. do you have good finances in place mm-hmm. uh, do you have a trigger to buy uh, mm-hmm. you know trigger as in a need as in are you already in a good home or so i i see a lot of people uh, if, when they get married they want to actually uh, get into a, a different house or different location they want to express themselves as an individual family rather than staying mm-hmm. with somebody mm-hmm. and you know uh, so yeah. and so forth uh, when people earn parents are in a different city you are in a different city then this okay let me buy something small you feel a sense of achievement so i think assess your need assess your financial uh, ability and assess your other needs over next five years you will have yeah. emis what are my other uh, needs and and so and so forth home uh, those who have never bought i can tell you that uh, it's a feeling that you mm-hmm. will you can't describe yeah you, yeah first home i can tell you that first home is always special mm-hmm. when you buy a first home it feels like you're actually on the top of mount everest <laughs> Hmm. and and that's why we all are in this industry when when you do the handover uh, process of people hmm. the joy of the families the kids the elders you know the couple uh, i mean they have actually built their home mentally hmm. over last 2 3 years already uh, so that expression or that uh, emotions can never be compared so hmm. assess your your situation uh, in in a way home could be little more expensive or little less expensive uh, but every year I, okay so this is another thing um, your home is going to be uh, you know expensive most of the years you are on your yeah uh, have you ever seen a labor taking less money next year no nope. if you have a driver a plumber an employee or whoever it is right everybody makes at least 5% 10% 15% more yeah it's the same set of people the real estate developers or construction companies also deploy right mm. so your labor cost is going up mm. your material cost almost always goes up mm. sometimes in single digit sometimes in double digit sometimes in triple digit which which happened last year in the ukraine you know crisis mm. Uh, mm. And, right. and and then you have limited space your cities are expanding but the prime real estate is is always limited so uh, year on year there will be a growth in terms of the uh, you know prices of real estate so you have to figure out what is it that will make you comfortable mm. to buy and and not come under distress and if that mm. moment is today go and buy if you like something go and buy uh, mm. i'll give you a small example of mine uh, i bought my first apartment in mumbai in 2004 just mm. when i booked after that uh, there was a change in the government uh, it was i think the vajpay government and then they were expected to win and they did not and congress government came in and and few okay. of my relatives said parag real estate prices are going to crash 20% 30% don't buy right now <laughs> uh well i i went on with my purchase <laughs> okay. and in about in, in about 3 years that flat i sold for double the price okay it did not go down it just went up like crazy mm-hmm. i mean those times were different but i'm saying it is you have to take a call and not let somebody else take a call if you are a wise mm-hmm. sensible person you will make a right choice mm-hmm. superb superb great i think that's a well concluded answer to this podcast i just like to end it with my signature rapid fire round so five words and uh, i'll begin so the first word being rera something which is uh, uh, required and it helps uh, developers and consumers both okay customers uh in the center of universe for real estate okay green versus blue what is your theme uh i would ideally want to have both <laughs> if you have to pick one uh blue okay great uh, fourth one being rustam ji Rustam ji, a uh, great company and thoughtful uh, homes. Okay, and the last one being Parag. Parag, uh, 
optimist and very high on india and 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 want to uh, i believe real estate industry is a nation building so mm-hmm. i would want to be in this industry till the time you know my 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 hands and legs and brain and eyes are working i will never retire from real estate awesome awesome great parag thanks thanks for doing this and thanks for being a part of economically yours i'm i'm honored to have you on the show thank you so much thank you charmi you're doing a great job and uh, keep doing this and uh, let's build india together <laughs>